well. It's also an organizational and delivery tool for your classes. So most of y'all, I think you've probably done an observation course where you've observed different high school classrooms? Yes. Right? So you've seen the filing cabinet. I think every ag teacher has a giant filing cabinet in their classroom. Yep. All right, this filing cabinet, we built it pretty much online. So we have all of our topics and everything, instead of you having to dig through and organize them all the time, we have a place for you to build that on your, our website. So we'll go ahead and create a course. Uh, can you all name a course for me you would teach every year? Animal science? Introduction to animal science. Yes, ma'am. All right, so we go down here to my IMS, and you'll see my courses. And so we'll do introduction to animal science. All right, you can add a little description. You create your course. This is, uh, again, this is your filing cabinet. This is where you're going to organize the specific course to be reused every single year. So we'll go back to looking through either by pathway or course for the curriculum we'll use. Say we'll go equine science, pick some introduction topics. So we're on the topic again. We'll go add topic to my IMS. All the courses I have created are listed right there. And all you have to do is click right there to add it in. And I'll go pick a few more. Let's see. Do nutrition again. You just add the topic in. Everyone following along so far? Yeah. yeah. All right, so as simple as that, you're adding all the things that you want to teach in your class. All right, and then we'll go back to my IMS, and you'll click your introduction course here. And we see we have everything we've added from the topics. And so now we can create a syllabus and organize what order we're going to teach this class in so you're ready every year. You know, come this uh, spring semester, we go, we'll have it already organized. You can print everything out, go day by day. So we can organize this however you want. Week one, February 1st, however you choose. You can design it however your classroom works, you know, block A, name it however you choose. So I like weeks. That's how a lot of syllabuses work. And then you don't have to re-name uh, it every year. And you can see you can also move these courses up and down, organize it in your order. We'll save that. And here is a neat feature. It will automatically generate a syllabus for you. A lot of times you have to turn this stuff into administration or you need a syllabus for your class as well. It'll automatically create it for you. You'll see the description of the class that we've already entered as well as these pre-written descriptions of the topics as well. So it's a neat little feature that does all the dirty work for you. All right, so now we have a course created. Again, this will be used every single year. It's your filing cabinet. Just slow me down if you need to. All right, from here, we'll go and create our individual classes. You go back under my, my IMS, and you'll see the My Groups and Exams. We'll go look at Manage Group Members. This would be a list of, you would go in and add all of your students and all of your I classes. If you use, uh, do y'all use AET? Yep. Yeah. A wonderful thing. You already have AET. Import everyone you have right from the AET website. So you get them all the students to put on their emails on your AET, <laughs> and you'll automatically. You know, okay. uh, <laughs> you repeat that. Just, they like that when you said that the um, like, uh, sounds of joy erupted from. Yeah. <laughs> Less work because the other way takes a little longer. I have to sit here and Bob Jones, you know, you have to do this every year. But so you just use AET, you know, take one day, make sure all your students enter in a good email and you import them all automatically and you'll have 200 students, however many are in your program, all uploaded. So this, these are all the students that I have loaded in my program right now. And these are the groups. This is the class for each year. So we're doing intro to animal science. 
So we'll create a new group. This will be Intro to Animal Science, Spring 2016. So this is a specific group of students per course. So you go under here and you click and you add the students that are in this class. I'm just going to add myself so I'm not emailing everyone. So you just click on the, you click, you add your students. Easy as, save your changes. Oops, sorry. And then from here is where you really go and you start sharing your course materials. So we can go back. There's a couple ways we can do this. Easy way, we already have our course designed. So we'll go back to our course under the My Courses function. And we'll see it's week one. Let's go set this up. So we already have, this is the topic we've already added to our course. We'll say share with the group. We'll click Intro to Animal Science for Spring 2016. And the neat thing is we can set deadlines. I can put this in the future. So I want this available for, I'm going to be out the first week of February. So I'm going to set this up for, and they need to have it done within that week while I have it up. So you can set it up kind of how, send it out that day, put deadlines on it, it's kind of your way. You can teach from outside the class or inside. So you can use it however you want. So we'll go through and you can see what you want to send to this group. These are my students in my animal science class for the spring. So I don't want them to have my lesson plan. But I'm going to send them the presentations, uh, an activity, and maybe the student notes. So I can send them all those. I can add an email notification as well, you know. And now I've shared all of that with these students. We can go through and we can see what it'll look like for their view as well. Uh, come back here. See if I can stay on my screen share as well. I'll just log out. That might be easier. All right, now we're going to go to the student view. I've just shared it's some topic information. We'll see what it looks like for the students. So student login, all it is is their email, and you select the school they're under. So, so no passwords, easy to log in. They can't forget anything. They just have to remember an email in their school. Shouldn't be too hard. All right, so we go here and I see everything I've shared with these students for each of their classes. So if the students are in multiple classes, they can kind of be organized this way. And so for, okay, they go under their website and they'll see and animal science, they have this shared. And they can go in and look and see what's available to them. And all of this will block out by February 7th. So if they haven't completed these tasks, it'll all go away so they don't do it in time or for your assignment. Again, it presents a similar topic view, but only what you want them to have as well. So it's kind of your ability to manage the class from computer or afar as well. All right, we'll go back to the teacher view. All right, so we'll go back to our class. All right, now we have these students, both Caitlin Kepler's. Uh, they reviewed their horse anatomy or livestock feed, whatever topic we sent them. They reviewed that. They've done the exams or they've done the activities. They've turned them into you. Now we can go to creating exams for them as well. This is really neat because it can be administered completely online, graded. It's all automatic. So just like we're sharing the topics as well, we can customize this. We'll name it quiz one. You'll set the date it'll go out as well as end. So we'll set this for, I'll do this for today.
And I'll have till tomorrow to do it. We'll go back and these are all your courses that you've created. And you'll see it only gives you the topics you've added under your course. So you don't have to filter through every animal science topic every single time. Just the ones you've already selected and designed for your course you're using. All right, so we're just going to do anatomy of the horse. You can choose all of these. You have your class already set up. It's easy to do an end of course exam. You select all the topics and you have access to a complete test bank. That's, I don't know how many questions, but you can easily throw that out at them. 200 question end of course exam. Takes you five seconds to make. So we go through and you can click and choose which questions you want to ask. You'll see the uh, correct answer is bolded on everything as well. So you can choose which ones you want. So I picked mine. You can choose to email them as well and message them. And this is as simple as creating exam is. These questions are all derived from the presentation and all the student notes that are within these topics already. So everything's following along with each other and you just have to go and select which ones you need for your class. Any questions so far? I think Rob's taking it in. Yeah, I have a tendency to go a little fast on this. All right, so I've just created the exam. We're still in teacher view and you can see no quizzes have been taken. So I'm going to be logging in and out again. So I'll log out of the teacher view, and I'll go back to my student account I already have. I recommend if y'all are doing this, make yourself add yourself as a student so you can test it out. The nice thing about IMS, we don't have any limits to students you can add, so you can add as many as you want. I have like five of my email accounts on here. It doesn't cut you off. All right. So previously, we just had the anatomy of the horse. I only sent the topic over. Now we'll suddenly see we have a quiz popped up. This can be, we can have these email out to the students as well. So if they're not checking their page every day, but this is what their homepage will look like. So we'll see, we have a 30 question exam, begin exam. All of these questions are randomized in order and as well as the answers here. So if two students are sitting next to each other on computers, they're going to be seeing different things with, no matter what question they're on. Everything will be in different orders. So you go through and you answer your questions. Then you submit the exam. All right, I only answered a few questions, so let's see how well I do. All right, quiz one, I got a 6%. Too correct. Not too good, but see, now we have a PDF summary of the results. Depending on how you operate, this can be something you have the teachers or the students turn into you. You have a sub, they print this out, they turn this in, it's verification they've taken it. If you like your paper format. Or we can go back to the teacher view and you'll see we'll have a grade, a grade book uploaded. All right, see the grade book, uh, my IMS, my exams grade book. I have a lot under here, we can look. Uh, one person has taken the exam, answered four questions, got two correct, uh, six percent. And here you can see what date and time they're taking it. And then we can look at the exam with the key as well under here. Also, another, a lot of your grade books will let you import from Excel, so we let you export to Excel. So you've got the grades already. We don't need to type these things five times over. So we already have the Excel documented ready for you. So keep everything easy. So far, any questions about the group exams? Nope. Yes? Looks good. All right, you can see as well under here, you can even add, a, if you go into edit it after it's created, you can even add a time function. You can set the specific time it's available or time limit. They only have 30 minutes for 30 questions or 
you can even go back and add that function in depending on how you prefer to administer exams. We do everything on the website, so it can be the Ag Teacher's Choice. You're not forced to use any of our functions. So you can do it exactly to your preference. All right, so we've gone through the grade book. We've gone through how to use all of our content and share it. Now, I'm sure you'll probably use your own content as well, and we allow that in our courses. So we're going to go back. You have your intro to animal science. Anatomy of the horse. We want to add our own file to this. I have my own PowerPoint about this lesson, so I can go in and I can name it. Choose a link or a file. And it's as simple as just uploading anything from what you already have on your computer. Simple as that. It'll be a let's see, you have PowerPoint here. And there it is. It's available on your specific topic. It, this won't be put onto the IMS website, but it'll be available under your profile. And now I have my own custom PowerPoint within the website. So I can now I can go and I can share that PowerPoint as well. See, you see my PowerPoint? So it's not just sharing our curriculum. It's a way to share your own. Did I miss anything? I don't think so. I feel like I moved through it pretty quickly. Uh, we can also, I guess one, one more point, test questions. You can add in your own exam questions as well. You can see we already have ours. These are the ones that we went through when I uploaded all the exam questions. I don't like these questions, so I'm going to go make my own. And you can add in multiple correct answers and write your own questions to be used. So you could actually use this website without actually using any of our material and just use it as delivery service. But again, everything is totally changeable, customizable, with no limits on how you can utilize any of our features. You can ignore one and use the other. It's supposed to be geared toward your specific classroom because we know every classroom works differently. Is there anything that I need to clear up or show more detail? Hey guys, do we have any questions about the utilization? Can you tell us one more time, please, how many different lessons were in there? Uh, there's over 300 topics. Okay, 300 topics. And that's uh, over 3,000 files. That would be the PowerPoints, lesson plans, things like that. No, tests, keys. Sure. So quite a bit of material on here. Uh, and video, um, now here's the next question for you. Uh, how can they search and find things easily? Like you showed them how to look through a course, how to look through a topic. Uh, are these items labeled? Like can they pull up, um, type into that search bar like a search term and pull up different uh, cross-related topics? Oh. They can pull up topics by titles if, if they search through the pathway. Okay. I just want to try to make it as easy as possible. Let's say, uh, here we are, we're at the main page. I'm going to give you a challenge, and I want you to show them how quickly they could find lesson plans related to that topic, okay? Are you ready, Ms. Kepler? All right. Okay, here's your challenge. We need to teach about plant propagation. Plant propagation. We're in the pathway, so we'll go under plant systems. We'll look under our files. You already see the word propagate, plant propagation. All right, and we look through this, and we have, where are we? Let's see, we'll do it, maybe. Uh, let's see. Okay. All right, we have pruning. Let's see, I don't know if we have anything specific to. Let's see, for, let's see. That's all right, you're not going to have everything. I'm sorry, I'll just give you another one. Let's try a different one. This is a fun game. We're going to teach Introduction to Soil, Soil Science 101. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to Plant Systems. We can look under Soil Science 101. We'll go to Introduction Topic. That's your Introduction to Horticultural Sciences. Uh, that's more of, let's see, yeah, Soil Formation right here. We have a PowerPoint on Soil Formation. Let's see if it'll upload on this screen. Soil Classification, Soil Importance. Now we have a soil formation. 
I don't know if y'all are seeing that, but. No, we're not. We're seeing it. We saw it. Uh, we All right. So it's pretty easy to go through, especially this pathway. If you don't use uh, the courses labeled this way. I like the pathway function myself. Sure. So uh, you go and look for uh, beef cattle production. We have anything you need to know, breeds of beef cattle selecting. It's pretty easy to sort through it through pathways as well. Okay, how many, uh, Dr. Ed, you may have to answer this. How many different customers uh, do you have right now using Texas A&M IMS online? So that could either be, you could say you've got how many schools if you want to. I don't know what numbers you use, but how do you, what metric do you share on different users or customers that you're servicing through your uh, software? Oh, holy cow. I mean, that, that's a number that we've never bothered to look at. I would say that at least one in five teachers in our state are using it. How many, and you might want to tell them, Kirk, how many, how many teachers in the state of Texas? About 1,700. So I'm thinking maybe one in five are using the service. Every, every ag teacher in the state of Mississippi through a state contract uses the service, and they're on their second year of that agreement. So I don't know how many ag teachers there are on Mississippi, 100, 120, something like that. Yeah. So it seems to be relatively popular in Mississippi. Uh, we have clients in Ohio have clients in California. Yeah. Spread across the United States. So since you know one of the our goals is that these young people are evaluating some of these sources so that when they're first year teachers and they're given a budget and have to make financial decisions for the program, they can make informed decisions. And so as they look at Texas this uh, project from IMS, um, talk to us a little bit about your subscription fee service or how it works. Well one of the interesting ways that we like to do business is and and your student teachers are aware of this they have unlimited access to the resource the whole time they are doing their student teaching or their internship and at the point in time when we cut their access off which will be sometime after they graduate they can subscribe to the service based on the number of teachers in their department when they're active actually actively teaching school okay for a two-teacher department at a school in Pennsylvania, the resource would run $350 for a two-teacher department. And once your teacher subscribed and we were aware that she was a graduate of Penn State, then we would internally move all of her files and all of her products from her student teaching site to her new school site. Where she would be able to log in and, and access all the materials and things that she created while she was student teaching. Oh, that's interesting. That's good. If she moves, if she waits three years and moves to a second school and she subscribes, then we'll simply transfer that stuff to the next school that he or she is at. So it's the kind of resource that what they develop and what they add can follow them all the way along. Or through happenstance, if the technology department decides to come in during the summer while you're at the FFA convention or something and wipe your computer clean, the only files you've lost are the ones that you developed. You would still have access to whatever was residing in IMS online, so you wouldn't have to start from scratch. And we think that's one of the advantages of the program is the fact that you have access to stuff that's stored on someone else's server. Sure. You don't have to worry what your IT people inadvertently do. Right. Cloud backup is awesome. So about, I heard you about the uh, teacher fee you know, per school. Uh, you also sell student accounts, right? As if they can track and take the quizzes and what have you? The, the student accounts would be part of that subscription service. That's wonderful. So they get all everything you've shown them. You get the access if you're in a two-teacher program for approximately three hundred and fifty dollars a year. Yes, sir. All right. That's what we just try to make sure as they learn how to look at this, guys. You got Dr. Ed in here. You got Miss Kepler. What other questions do you have before we let them get about their curriculum besides talking to us? Yes. There's a lot of single-teacher programs. 
Okay, so the question is, like, and we do have a predominance of single teacher programs here in Pennsylvania, so the question was, hey, does that, can I cut it in half? Is it 150 for a one ag teacher then, or how much is it if you're a single ag teacher program? It will be $250 for a single teacher program. There you go. Then every time you add a teacher, we roll it up $100. And I think the maximum subscription six fifty for five teachers is our cap. And after that, you can if you have a seven teacher department, it's still six fifty. All flat fees. <laughs> they like that. That's very good. What about yeah, Katie? Do you have a question? Yeah, with um, our oh, well. student membership. Oh, sorry, with our student membership right now, um, do will our students this spring be able to have student membership? Is that? The student membership is as simple as an email. So um, something I didn't really go over, I also, you can add like substitutes to make a group of subs. So it's not limited. As long as you have someone's email, you can send them your My IMS materials and make uh, a student account for them, essentially. Yeah, if you wanted to have a group of five students that were working on horse judging, you could identify those five students as your horse CDE team and push designated materials to them if you had if y'all were snowed in heaven forbid you could identify your students in classes of ever whatever you chose and push out materials to them you could work on at home so the the my groups piece gives you lots of different options within there you can set an expiration date for the groups or you can leave it open-ended that's pretty powerful, and that's becoming much more common up here as far as instead of snow days, uh, what they call electronic days, and the students are still responsible. Uh -huh. and, so, and one thing that Miss Kepler did mention, or she mentioned to me, but she did not share with, we did not share with y'all, and this is good thinking on her part, through a project with our State Department of Education, we do have a number of free online resources that teachers can access. And these things are put together uh, in case your principal came to you a week before school started and said, oh, by the way, you're teaching the vet science course. And you're thinking, holy cow, you know, where was this news back in May when I could have got ready for it? Uh, but there's a significant number of lesson plans for vet science or several other courses that teachers can access for free. These are not the high quality product that you find at IMS online. They're, they're designed to be a survival resource, but there's a lot of stuff there and it is available for free access. Where, where can they see those? Is that like a, on the front cover page? Are looking at it? They all see it. They're shaking their head. They know I didn't know. That's okay. No, we have, to keep all the players in the business happy, we've kind of worked harder at separating those resources from IMS proprietary resources. So if they will go to the website, TX Educational Excellence, and you can punch that up if you like, TX Educational Excellence.com. Oh, that's on it. Yeah, they're looking at it. If you look at the top 10 column under cluster resources, the link that says AFNR teaching materials, they're on the left side up near the top. And you click on that link. This page lists all of the courses that we offer in Texas. So if you were to click on any one of those, like small animal or vet med apps or whatever you chose, there's a significant number of resources that can be used. These are designed for, for Texas teachers, obviously, and that's our course naming system, but we certainly don't have any problem with anybody else using them. And one thing that, that I'm going to try to start working through in my presentations is I go to develop a, a demo lesson plan, I'm gonna start pulling from these materials here because I think there is some very good content that can be worked with and incorporated there. Sure. I mean, if, if, if you've taught everything you know to teach about small animals, and then all of a sudden you look down the list and you say, holy cow, here's a lesson about amphibian pets. 
what will I teach this Tuesday? I know we'll teach them about amphibian pets. That might be a good choice. Uh, hamsters as pets. Uh, maybe Pennsylvania might have been ahead of Texas in companion animal coursework. This is kind of a recent addition for us. I tell you what, I really appreciate y'all's time. It's been helpful. I think it's made them aware of the resources they have in front of them. Um, before I let them go, because we have reached that point of the time that I asked for them to allot, uh, do you have any final questions? I don't want to cut them off without you guys getting every question you want answered. No? You okay? All right. Kirk, is there any last things you want to tell them before we log off today? Uh, we're as accessible as email. Our email address is ims at tamu.edu. We appreciate the opportunity to visit with you today and just uh, let us know if you have any questions or concerns. We're happy to respond. Thank you, Dr. Foster. You are wonderful. I hope you have a very happy 2016. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.